And I just think socially, just because of because of social media, and I'm not trying to oversimplify the role of social media, but just the unification of thought and conversation and all of the avenues that we can collectively uh, have these discussions is by far moving the dialogue, moving the attention to not necessarily eradicating, but at least leveling um, some of the inefficiencies and inequalities that that exist if we want to acknowledge them holistically or not, they do. Um, so just, you know, just because of technology in and of itself, we are progressing that conversation and we are inevitably getting closer to this area of uh, 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 closer to an equality state, um, though, you know, will it be, there always, there's always hierarchy in some way. Right. The conversation today is race. There's always some level of hierarchy, be it, you know, justifiable or not. Um, so we're not looking for this utopian state. But, you know, are there levels of progressiveness that are happening all around us? If we want to admit it or not, I, I, I would say absolutely. So we're definitely moving closer to um, where I think, you know, we, we need to be societally and, and it's going to continue to happen as long as we have these levels of forums. Um, available that weren't available, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, because the conversation hasn't changed mm -hmm. from 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. It's the same conversation, but we're just able to see each other via technology and, and progress and, and move this thing a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. and uh, on I'm, go, ahead. Uh, so, go ahead, go ahead. If you have a question, go ahead, that's fine. So yeah, it's, it's relevant to this. I was, I was curious, uh, Dr. Thompson, what, what, how you think uh, what sorts of strategies we can um, we can implement with given the, this abundance of new technology and the, the possibilities being endless, because it seems like sometimes the technology is actually setting us back in terms of like the, the, the kinds of conversations that get had for the most part on, say, Twitter. I know that I can have good conversations with people on Twitter, but a lot of the time they just you know, people are trolling or people, you know, can't handle the, 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 the short format or people get, you know, uh, Twitter rage, all sorts of things can happen. I mean, personally, I think I like this kind of format. I think we should do this more, but I'm wondering if, if you have anything, uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, fundamentally, I mean, we have to remain, and I, I, I'm having all of this sunshine, so excuse me, <laughs> I'm like trying to move out of the sunshine, but I'm going to stay here. I'm staying here. Um, I've been drinking my chlorophyll. So um, with that, you know, I think fundamentally, you know, we can't start having the conversations at 21, right? So I do think that fundamentally there needs to be some type of educational shift where, and I don't, and, and we only have a couple of minutes, so I, I can't go into deep, you know, I can't expound deeply on that subject, but, you know, we can't wait until we're 21 and to have these type of conversations. Um, because believe it or not, you know, even with, as you said, a, a lot of times social media can have negative implications if used negatively or used improperly. Um, I, I think that a lot of those conversations need to be had in a real truthful educational experience from the start. I also firmly believe that, you know, if our educational system and not to go off on a tangent was delivering accuracy um, from a historical perspective, we won't even find ours, we wouldn't find ourselves still having this conversation um, to date. But I do think that these type of forums where we can, um, if we agree or disagree, where we can just still continue to establish these level of dialogue forums, where we can just have adult mature conversations, not necessarily walk away from, you know, walk away in agreement, because I don't think, I think that actually stifles in innovation is when everyone is always head nodding and agreeing. So I think that some level yeah. of conflict is healthy and I want to maintain that level of healthy conflict, but we can't be afraid to have the conversation. We can't be afraid to hold these types of forums. We can't be afraid to have trolls come and do what trolls do and allow that to shut us down. I mean, those of us who want to see the progression and we want to see society as a better place, we're the ones who have to be incredibly vigilant and fearless and courageous, right? And, and, and having that courage to broach these type of conversations on all levels. 
You know, Alma talked about from an economic perspective, continue those conversations within that circle. Sam, you know, from a philosophical perspective or Eric, not that we can't cross boundaries, but I mean, we all have a responsibility to kind of not out shout the, 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 the troll. And that's who I'm talking about, <laughs> someone who's opposition of what we're doing, but out shout the person who's actually trying to stifle what it is our message is, I think we all have a responsibility in remaining vigilant to what we believe, but also remaining vigilant to being open to new understanding and growth. So we all have a responsibility there. It's not for Facebook to govern or Twitter to govern or whomever to govern. I think that we self-govern in that way. And we all have a, a, a responsibility of pushing this thing forward if we're ever gonna get better. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Brittany King. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, you're super. And, and, and that of what she's price. Absolutely. All you day. guys, this, uh, this conversation has been so, like, exceeded my expectations. But I actually have one last question for you. Um, and it actually marries with what um, Dr. Thompson and what Sam was talking about um, with continuing these dialogues and conversations on a national, like, with a national debate on CRT. What have you found problematic about how your side communicates with the other? And what advice would you give those individuals to better communicate their points? And if I can get like one person from the anti and one from the pro to answer. Uh, I can go here. And um, I don't know if it's, uh, I'm a rhetorician. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to talk about language and, and things like that. Um, I don't, know if it's a uh you know on the face problem that is happening on uh, my side of the issue um but we need to be more explicit about empathy um both cognitive and affective empathy trying to figure out why this person thinks what he or she thinks or feels what he or she feels right um and i feel like i do that, but people will think I don't. So there's also that situation. Um, but I also know people who are, you know, they, they, they see this other side as up to something because they won't have conversations because they, um, you know, they're against the scientific method, you know, as a, <laughs> or something like, right, right. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, trying to understand why they could possibly be like that, right. Or, or feel like that. Um, you may not get an answer. You probably won't. But I think uh, having that in mind, trying to be empathetic um, is a good idea. So perhaps we don't do that enough. Mm -hmm. Anyone? I, I'm not even sure who's the pro at this point, um, just given our dialogue. So I am not necessarily speaking from the pro. I'm just speaking from a position of growth. Um, I... I uh, I am a firm believer in understanding why you feel the way that you feel and also giving the permission to grow, given the permission to change and evolve positions based on information that you've gathered along the way. So I would just stress for anyone on either side, right? First off, understand why you believe what you believe, because if you can't articulate that, it's going to be incredibly difficult for you to kind of, you know, withstand the pressures of someone else who may not agree with you. But then to Eric's point, I am a firm believer in looking at sources outside of those that I continue to get my information from and trying to, with intentionality, understand what that opposition, what that other opinion may be. There is, there is zero opportunity for me to grow personally. If I don't understand a contradictory view to how I may believe in something. And that is not to say it's to change my belief. It may strengthen my belief, but I at least have to put forth the effort in educating myself and having an educated opinion and not just one that's purely based on emotion or purely based on my tribe or truly based on what someone else just put in my ear. Go out and seek the information and seek your own understanding because once you have your own understanding, your convictions are so much more pure and so much more um, sincere. And I just see so many, I see so much insincerity in these conversations lately. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if we can get back to truly knowing what it is that we truly believe and knowing why we believe that, I, I think that, in, 
immediately would change the face and the complexion of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add real quick, 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 quick. The Socratic method, both on yourself and when you're engaging with uh, the opposition, right? Just asking questions rather than Absolutely. making comments and, and, and reacting. And it's something that I need to get better at, right? If, if, you, if you only ask questions during debate, right? You, you can make all your same points, Just frame them as questions. They're, they're perceived less as attacks and they're, uh, they, they, they just, they just leave more space for the person to see, actually, no, I don't have to stay here in this position that I'm in. I can, you know, I can explore a little more and, and you can use it both on yourself and when you're talking with other people, it's, it's mm -hmm. the greatest. That's why they killed him. Cause he was, it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, I concur with that point about the Socratic method. I, I would love to see more of that in the world. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that this discussion, when it is published next week and shared, is going to be a great example of how two sides or people with different point of views can actually have a conversation because I have learned so much from like each of you. And I'm going to be up all night now just thinking about <laughs> everything that you guys have said. Um, but I, I want to wrap this episode up with something I like to do. I like to end it on a lighter note, which it already was ended on a great note but I asked each guest if they will tell the rest of us to name two famous or historical figures alive or dead that you would love to dine with and really briefly tell us why I feel like oh, I have okay. to say Socrates now right like yeah. Socrates got to be one but no Eric um W.E.B. Du Bois mm -hmm. uh, is definitely one um because what he did when he did it you know um he, uh, what people call harm these days, he'd laugh at, I think, mm -hmm. you know, given what he overcame mm -hmm. and how well he overcame it. I would love to have a conversation with him and we share a birthday. So that would be cool. Um, That's tight. And uh, I, I really, I guess off the top of my head, Ralph Ellison, because Invisible Man kind of changed me. I was like, did I write a book in my subconscious? <laughs> I, I could really relate to that book to the point where, I mean, man, I wish I could talk to him, you know? Uh, so I would, I would use those two. Mm -hmm. Sam? Or did yeah, you I'll, so Socrates definitely won. And then I was going to say Kendrick because Kendrick Lamar is my favorite artist, like by far. Um, but then I was like, yeah. wait a minute, Socrates and Cornell West in dialogue. Like, oh, no. I don't, so I just leave it, you know, let the, let the viewer decide between those two. Yes. Alma? Um, I would pick in the dead department, C.S. Lewis, who, uh, he was a, a, an author and kind of an armchair theologian, and he influenced a lot of my own religious thinking, and actually a lot of my songwriting as well, um, especially his views about human nature and moral absolutes and so forth. It's just been really, really interesting for me. And then second would have to be Lauren Hill. I don't know what she's up yeah. to these days, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if she's well or unwell. I, I honestly, I'm not gonna judge, but um, she's changed my life, uh, certainly musically, but spiritually too, and, and changed the life of a generation of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Casey? Yeah, so mine, um, I want a picnic. I need, a, I need a pep talk. So I want Nina Simone to just Ooh. kick me in my butt and tell me, just keep going, right? And then I want Nefertiti there because I would love for her to, I would love to just look back and just see from this favor, this this huge epic, you know, the, the so many things, discoveries, innovations. And then I have Nina Simone here sitting back looking at her and then they're both looking at me like, so what's your problem? Like, so what's your, what's, what's your problem? <laughs> so I kind of need that pep talk. And I think that between the two of them, as extreme as those two extremes can be, um, I think they could give it to me. So that's who I want at my picnic. Last but not least. That's me? Right. Yeah. So I'm glad you picked me last because I was really struggling <laughs> to come up with an answer. Um, I don't they generally like these questions, but I came up with an answer. So for, I guess, a dead person, um, someone named Paul Bogle, who is a Jamaican national hero, 
and he led a slave rebellion um, in his time in Jamaica. And I never fully understood why I was attracted to that story, but I've had his like poster for a long time. And I think I just, I thought like th that just story was, was cool. And I guess it would be cool to just like understand what that was like, you know? I think he was, um, he was some kind of religious person. The story's kind of vague in my head, you know, like a pastor or something. And um, yeah, he did just that. He led a <laughs> slave rebellion in Jamaica, just one of many that occurred. Um, so I think it would be cool to, to meet him. And then another person is Thomas Sowell. I would love to thank him um, because he really changed my perspective about just understanding um, economics. And um, I, I think he has a great mind. So it would be great to meet and dine with him. So those are my answers. <laughs> well, is one person supposed to be alive? I'm sorry. No, it, either or. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Right. You did not do it wrong. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate each of you. Um, tune in for this episode of American Shade. And I'm so happy that you guys brought your insight to this panel. I am deeply grateful for it. I definitely learned a lot. And if you guys want to learn more about each of them, all their information will be in the description below. So see you next one. American Shade, thank Let's you. Let's do it again. Thank Let's you. do it again. Oh, yeah, part two's coming. Yes. Let's do it again. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.